Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess. I'll try to be as instructive as possible throughout the game, making sure that we all understand what lines we are going through and probably what happens at the end. We'll analyze it from the computer as well later on and understand what we missed during the game or how it could have been better from both the sides. Now, before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon over there so that we don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. And I hope everyone improves from uh, chess yard, learns some new tactics or maybe some openings, maybe some middle game or end game technique, enhance their game further and probably win at whatever level you are playing. So yeah, let's start off with the game. Got the black pieces here. We'll pl try to play the Karukan defense. C65 becomes the advanced variation as he advances the pawn. If he would have exchanged on the d5, it becomes the exchange variation. Probably now I can play pawn to e6. He's offering bishop exchange. We'll bring it back. If he takes, we can take back and open up the h file. He doesn't, so probably now. Uh, I think we can move knight or let's just play c5. The idea is if he takes, which he does, uh, our bishop gets to with the tempo. Probably now knight to c6, taking control of the center slowly. Pawn a6, kicking the bishop away, he takes and gives us more central pawn now. Uh, if you see, the pawn chain is nice. Stacking the dark square bishop now. Probably just can come back. But if I come over to e7, my that would hinder my knight's development. So I took it to a7. It's trying to exchange the dark square's bishop. Uh, I'm not willing to give it, or I should. Point is, if I don't, he's planting his bishop in the next move. If I take his f5, it's opened up for the attack. Uh, f5 is still doable. Probably I can place my light square bishop here in the center, controlling everything. Now the bishop is planted probably here, unless this knight goes back and tries to attack. Can also attack from here. Yep, he's trying to attack the light square bishop now. I have to take here. No other option. It gives him some tempo as well, but what else can I do? I can probably bring back the bishop. That's also a good option. Defends the f7 forever. It's trying to attack the queen and give a check next move and spoil my castling. But I'm not looking forward to castle, so that's okay. Queen to b6, attacking the pawn. Now just moving the king upwards. I think he is better on e7. The knight can now be developed on h6, defending f7 again. And the pawn is hanging. If he doesn't see, he does. Can If I take the b pawn, he take, he gets his rook also in over there. So not a good choice. I'll first develop the knight. Maybe now try to see the knights from f5. Losing out on time, maybe, because I'm trying to be instructed during the game. So I'll try to be a bit fast over here now. And nothing to be that worried about as well. Just rook to f8. So that there's no problems at the end. Rook exchange is always good. Both the F files are open. F file is completely open. I said both the F files. There are just one F file. It was semi opened earlier. Now it's completely opened. K 
can we exchange the knights? If he does, my pawn structure also gets better. If he doesn't, then probably I can take and win on the pawn. Extra pawn. He takes now. I take back. If he now exchanges the rook, he's looking losing another pawn maybe. If he takes with the queen now, or he doesn't. Now I, we need to just make sure that he's not entering our space. Plus, we are always attacking. So let's go ahead with the queen somewhere. Trying to find some attacking points. Maybe here. Okay. Queen to e4. Centralizing the queen. Nothing more than that. Oh, the pawn is hanging over here. I will just push the pawn forward. If he moves the queen, he's losing out on the pawn as well. By Okay, uh, I can exchange the queens. That's best. And the pawn structure also gets settled out. Perfect. Oh, he doesn't take now. But that loses another pawn. Not a good, good choice, I would say. Now I'm going to take the queen. Simple. And he resigns. So, uh, techniques were simple. Uh, try to exchange the queens in such a way that you make sure that your pawn structure is pretty solid. He just resigned in this game because of the pawns, extra pawns and the pawn structure was pretty nice. So that's how you should actually deal in the end game. Just don't go for exchange clearly when that could have been just equal in advantage, but try to take advantage of the situation over there. As you see, uh, the moves before the game was pretty much uh, in Black's favor, yes, but not completely. But after I offered him queen exchange, of course he should not take, but he places the king on the wrong square there and that gives some serious advantage. Because we take on the pawn and now computer suggesting you can take on the queen. I should have actually, just trying to play around and then I took it. After he takes, there's like nothing remaining in the game. I just go with my king on the other side of the board, wherever he goes. I just uh, gobble these pawns remaining and just promote to queen as soon as possible. So yeah, a good game was in control. Uh, we'll just quickly analyze the game. Started off with e4. I played c6, d5, the Karukhan defense. Turns into adva uh, advanced variation because he advanced the pawn. Uh, as I said in the game as well, if he takes on the d5, that probably is not much challenging for the Karukhan defense. Advanced variation is the best one because you are actually controlling center, but because you have pushed the pawns too forward, uh, there's some weakness as well. So here I play f5. He develops his knight. Pawn to e6. He asks for bishop exchange and I just bring the bishop back. And then normal development. Uh, just playing c5, trying to break through. He does. I take back. Um, it's a draw situation from here. Like It's neutral development for now. Not a draw situation, I would say. Uh, so the development has been nice from both the sides he tries to pin the knight i just try to remove the pin he takes and take back again some now this is some advantage because you have got center pawns these would be handy at the end connected ones and if you see the opponent has already lost the deep pawn, so that's advantages for black he tries to attack the dark square bishop i bring it back he offers for bishop exchange and yes the right move to take the problem here was if I don't take and just remove the bishop from here, probably he's just bringing on either the knight in over here or the bishop. If he brings the knight, then again, after I place it here, he can just go back and threaten some. Uh, not here exactly, but of course, on a safer square and attacking the rook again. And white is an advantage. So I didn't want him to give that advantage. And I took on the bishop. He takes back. Opens up the f file for his attack, uh, semi open because the pawn is also there on f7. I just tried to plant my bishop, but that was probably the wrong move. I should have went with knight development. Yep, and he plays knight to c5, attacking the dark light square bishop. I bring the bishop backwards. I wasted a couple of moves there, so not really good. He plays knight to b7. He's in control of the game now. He's about to spoil castling, but 
placing knight on d6, he does. I play king to e7. And here he plays queen to e2. That was probably the bad move from his side. Otherwise, it was 2.9 in his favor and he just had to play pawn to uh, c4 here. So what was the threat here? Um, can I take on here? I can't because that definitely opens up the file and he can take back attacking the queen as well as threatening some checks from here. So that's bad. So I, of course, cannot take. What other options were there? Uh, if I take on the pawn, which I was probably eyeing at that point of time, he just saves his king and thereafter there is no real legitimate threat from there on. So again, I have to go ahead with the development. And after this, probably he can, he can take the pawn or probably proceed with the pawn as well. That also makes sense to me. He can get the rook uh, centralized. So he has a lot of options there. Um, and black is probably going to have a tough time from here on. But again, it's how you play from there. Uh, if yes, the knight comes over here, is attacking the pawn on c6, threatening check, so you have to defend it. And if you defend with any of the rook, your rook is going, you're going to ex go exchange down. That's the only thing that will happen from here. There's no other option. He takes maybe, gives a check. Oh, uh, he's not going to go exchange down. Um, that's a bad move. So, yep, I can defend it. What is the follow-up from here? Probably rook to c1. I can take on the pawn, but then the rook comes in the center. He has a lot of open files that can lead to some disaster for the black. So, yeah, let's go back to the game where he played queen to e2. I developed the knight on h6, defending the f7. Extra protection for the f7. He plays uh, knight to h4 here. That gives probably some advantage. I bring rook to f8. Uh, then making sure the f7 is extra guarded. He takes on the bishop. That's a bad move because I can now take back. The f5 is completely open now. Uh, he doesn't go for exchange. I go for the knight exchange, which he denies. Oh, that was another good move. That could have been a clincher. After the move, he has to save the queen. He says the queen, I took the rook. He has to now take with the pawn because, of course, I have a rook here. So that's that's probably winning. That was a good knight move, probably. But I was more uh, thinking about exchanging knights, which I do. After, the, after he takes back, I take the pawn. So I'm pawn up now. Files are pretty much OK. He takes on the rook. I take back. He sends the other rook as well. I took. He takes with the king. We are now in the queen endgame. Uh, yes, he could have taken the pawn there, but uh, not some serious threat over there. So I just continue maneuvering my queen, making sure the pawn is safe now. He plays queen to uh, f2 here. That's what was losing completely because after I play queen to f5, and if he takes, there's just I solidify my pawn structure even further, and there's no way that white can win from here. That's a typical easy end game from black where black has got extra pawns and king is also more centralized so he denied the queen exchange but he moved his king to e2 that was even worse i take on the pawn and then i we just exchange the queens and there he resigns um, this was some computer line thereafter that bit. i can just completely win uh, winning from here so yeah, I hope you like the video. Uh, please do let me know your feedback. Uh, share it in your friend circle and probably learn the Karo Pan defense. It's actually very helpful when you're playing as black. Uh, it's a very solid opening for black. You develop your pieces slowly, but yeah, you are not going for the, ex the aggressive attack in the opening towards the center, but eventually you crush your opponent uh, after his attack goes haywire. Uh, all right, so thank you so much for your time. Please do subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon if you haven't yet so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting. Thank you again for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.